But so if you've got those boots on, use it. You can kick someone with a steel-toed boot, they're gonna be pulling teeth out of your boot for the next week. Sakuraba Kazushi! Antonio Rodrigo Nogueira! And she is famous cult following in mixed martial arts, and Tekken 8 got her to do the ring announcing. Okay, you can see right here, rolling knee bar. She sets it up, she goes punch, punch, punch into a scissor sweep takedown, and then turns it immediately into an arm bar. Great job, Tekken 8, proud of you. Look at these graphics and that hair. That's a lot of scars. That is the face of a fighter right there. He's seen some wars. So he's got MMA gloves slash brass knuckles. Very illegal and very effective. Uppercut after a front kick. Again, combinations, throwing punches that lead to the next punch, right? Use your, your momentum when you're attacking. And if you can fly in the air with devil wings, all the better. Front kicks to the face. So in Muay Thai, the teep kick is a front kick, right? So instead of a big roundhouse kick, it's a kick that goes straight forward and back, just kind of straight up. And if you do it to the face, it is a giant insult. You're supposed to just teep to the chest, to the leg, to the body. If you do it to the face, it's like you're challenging them to a duel. It's like you're taking off your glove and slapping them in the face. Double hammer fist. Flying in the air, double hammer fist. That's a good way to like get a lot of fans, but also break your fingers at the same time. All right, next up, Anger of the Beast. So he's got knee pads, shin guards. This is a pro wrestler. You can tell his style is pro wrestling. He's got the cape, the mask, the tights, jumping front kick combination. Oh, holding him and then punch. Again, if you got a very fast fighter, you gotta hold him down and then hit him. Very pro wrestling move there, right? Double undercooks, slam, and a power bomb. Throw him against the cage and corner him. If you can get the grappler, if you can get them cornered against the cage, that's where you want them. You don't want your opponent being able to move around. Corner him, get to work. So you're not gonna survive clean punches like this or clean kicks like this. Your power meter that doesn't exist in MMA would immediately disappear. But you can't have a game be too realistic. You don't wanna punch him one time clean in the head and have the game be over, unless you're betting on it. All right, on to our next one. Uh, sunglasses and guns in the fight. Okay, I, I'm picking her already. I don't even know who she's fighting. I wonder if sunglasses would be a little bit of an advantage in the cage because then you can't see their eyes. So if I'm like looking to like strike low, but I can go high. But then again, really, really good fighters know how to fool their opponent using their eyes. You're looking one way and going the other, like a Patrick Mahomes throw. Okay, you can see right here, rolling knee bar. She sets it up. She goes punch, punch, punch into a scissor, a scissor sweep takedown, and then turns it immediately into an arm bar. That is, textbook flashy grappling. That's actually a real move. You don't see it very often because it's so low risk in flying, but that's a real technical grappling. All right, so she's doing a good job of going small strike, small strike, small strike, leading to a big strike. So all of your strikes ahead of time, you're just trying to get them off balance. You're trying to get reads, little punches, little kicks, just being quick, staying out of danger. And you're using that all to set up the kill shot at the end. Little strike, little strike, little strike. Once I got you where I want you, I've gotten your head going a certain way from little strikes. I've gotten you off balance with all my little strikes. Now I'm going in for the kill shot. She does a great job of that. Brian Fury. Metal on your fist. That's always nice to do fake brass knuckles. If all fails, you've got grenades too. Look at that, spinning back attacks, roundhouse kicks, all playing off the last move. So when you're fighting and doing everything in succession, it's it's really important because you don't want to stop halfway through a combination. But because mixed martial arts, you always have ways for them to play off the other. So normally in like traditional Muay Thai, for instance, I throw a left hook, that's followed by a right kick because one loads up the other. I've turned my body to throw a hook. Now my right kick is all loaded up. The next stage of that is opponents start to know that. They know if I throw a left hook, the next strike's coming on the other side. Another thing that's that's been involving in MMA the last 10 years is same side strikes. I'll throw a left hook, and even though and when you're expecting a strike from my right, I throw a left kick over. That's just the constant evolution of martial arts. Big, powerful punch. That's normally used to be set up. And if you can get out a Gatling gun and finish your opponent that way, why wouldn't you just open up with that? You'd think if you had a Gatling gun, that would be your first move. I guess he's a crowd pleaser. So you hear that announcer in the background, that woman's voice, that's the voice of Len Hart. She was actually the real true announcer for Pride Fighting Championships, a Japanese promotion that was really successful in the 90s and early 2000s. And she was known for her big, outrageous, flamboyant announcements. Sakuraba Kazushi! Antonio Rodrigo Nogueira! And she is famous, cult following in mixed martial arts, and Tekken 8 got her to do the ring announcing. Great job, Tekken 8. Proud of you. Getting Len Hart on there. 
Okay, jumping attacks, teeps, front kicks. Again, everything linear, pushing them back up against the taco truck. Or that a hot dog cart? Either way, you got their back against the wall. And that's when you unload your attacks. Big uppercut to the body, hulking up, and big right uppercut. Video games love the uppercut because it sends fighters flying in the air, right? If I hit you with an uppercut and you go flying, that just looks super cool. Obviously, in real life, that normally doesn't happen, but we have seen some fighters who have such big uppercuts, well, they'll hit you with an uppercut and keep you from collapse. We've seen that a couple times, where the uppercuts are so powerful, the guy's unconscious body is trying to fight back and fall to the ground, but the uppercuts were more powerful than gravity. You don't see it very often, but I've seen it before. Schoolgirl coming in on a bicycle. You would not expect this person to be able to fight. Look at that face. Look at those eyes. But surprise, surprise, she can kick butt. So a lot like in mixed martial arts, Tekken 8 does a really great job of when you're doing an attack and it gets your fighter off balance, gets them guessing, gets them not knowing what to do. So unlike mixed martial arts, like if I'm hitting you, if I'm attacking you in mixed martial arts, you're not gonna be as dazed or unable to move as you are in Tekken 8, but it does throw you off. If you're coming in for an attack and I jab you, you're, you're a split second off. If you're coming into attack and I lay kick you, you're a split second off. Tekken 8 does a great job when opponents are discombobulated, you got to take advantage of those split seconds when your strikes land and build on your next one. And you can tell when you're not going to be a big, hulking, powerful fighter, you got to be a speedy fighter. And that's who she is. And she hits you with a nice, smart lesson at the end of the, at the, end of the fight. She's the type of opponent that after you win a fight and she beats you, she walks over and raises your hand like you did a great job. I hate that. Imagine how humiliating it would be. Absolutely humiliating to get your kicked and then have the opponent raise your hand at the end of the fight. Hate that. Oh, I got a Bruce Lee looking dude here. Again, more uppercuts, spitting attacks, hitting all the notes, body shot, nunchucks. Talk about using a weapon that uses momentum. The nunchucks, you're just constantly moving. You can always tell a Hollywood punch because they hold it at the end. If I'm throwing a strike, I want it either back to my next punch or back to my face to cover. In Hollywood, when you throw a punch and you flex at the end, yeah! you can tell like the actor was doing their like push-ups before they filmed that scene and they're just trying to show off their muscles. But you can't blame them. So why don't you just take the nunchucks out right at the beginning? And jumping, stomp. So in mixed martial arts, it's illegal to stomp your opponent, but you can ax kick your opponent, which is a big difference. A stomp is when I'm lifting like my knee in the air and coming straight down. An ax kick is when my leg is straight and I could do kind of a rotational move and come down on my heel. Stomps, illegal. Ax kicks, very much legal. Tell him, Lenhart, busting through a brick wall. Break your knuckles before the fight starts. Interesting strategy. He gets a bicycle and a brick wall? All right, you better impress then. Big, powerful punches, big front kicks. So if you have those big shoes on, like army boots, so in Sambo, it's the Russian martial art. And the reason why they do their competition with boots on and like bigger jackets because they want it to be as realistic as possible to fighting in a war, right? If I'm fighting in a realistic combat scenario, I'm not gonna be wearing a gi or fight shirt, shorts or be barefoot or have my hands wrapped. So they try to use that, the realisticness of it. But the problem, so if you've got those boots on, use it. You can kick someone with a steel toed boot, they're gonna be pulling teeth out of your boot for the next week. Oh, he caught him in a suplex. So now you can definitely tell this guy's a Sambo fighter because he's doing grappling moves, big suplexes, and he's got the boots on. Pretty bold claim, strongest in the universe, right? With no sleeve on either. So he has one arm that's nice and loose because there's no sleeve and one that is. One blocks, one punches, or maybe it's just a fashion statement. I don't know. Fighting in a skirt, surprisingly functional. You move your legs around as much as you want to, as she's doing very well there. Back kicks, spinning kicks, ax kicks. She's a kicker. So if you're fighting on a hard surface, you do not want to go to the ground. It's one thing to get slammed on a wrestling mat, one thing to get slammed on the canvas of a, of a fight promotion, but on the ground, like hard ground, you're getting broken. So these big wild kicks, like kicks have a lot of advantages. Kicks are generally more powerful than a punch. They're, your legs are longer than your arms, so you can attack from a further distance. The problem is all that extra power and length makes it easier to counter. To throw a big powerful kick, I have to be off balance. There's no other way to do it. If I'm gonna throw a kick with any sort of power, and so if it's blocked or countered, you're already off balance. So you're, you're weighing the risk and the reward fighting with this way. And she's fighting for the love of her cat. So you got good motivation. But then she is a crazy cat lady as well, which means you don't know what's gonna happen when you fight. All right, gloved up, jersey on, hair in a ponytail. Yeah, this is a karate guy. Jumping attacks, jumping kick attacks, spinning attacks. You know the drill. You know how we roll at Tekken 8. Using the punch to set up the kicks. So this is a very like Taekwondo style of fighting where like the kicks 
you get a lot more points. Sometimes fighters use kicks to set up their punches. This guy's using his punches to set up his kicks. Oh, what great timing. Bicycle kick? That, yeah. Little fast kicks followed by the big kick at the end. You want to use the little kicks to set up the big kick. <laughs> Man, I have to keep whooping this guy's butt. Oh, I got stuff to do. I got a motorcycle ride to go on. Probably has a hair appointment. But if you're the winner, you always look good. What's well, one thing I've learned? No matter what you look like, if you win, you're looking good. Happen when you fight. A lot of these fighters sound like they don't want to fight. They're peacekeepers. They fight so their kids don't have to. Yeah, this is crazy terrain to fight in. Like, I would just go for a takedown and they just hold their head under the water till the bubbles stop. But I'm also a psych psychopath. Then also fighting in like ankle deep water, the, the grapplers and the slower fighters have an advantage because it kind of keeps you from being able to be really active, right? I don't know if the game included that as part of it where these guys are slower in mud, but in real life, you're slower. Big uppercuts, spinning attacks. Shots to the crotch are illegal in mixed martial arts, but because it's MMA, there are no real rules, just suggestions. Like you can get away in almost every single MMA fight with a good crotch chop right out of the gate and not get penalized. You're allowed to, you're allowed to cheat in mixed martial arts is what I'm trying to say. So I don't know if she killed him or cured him, but she's using magic and I guess we'll never know. We'll have to wait till Tekken 9 before we find out what happened. Yeah, a lot of body armor, which certainly helps. Straight out of Game of Thrones. But if you can move with armor on, you got a good advantage. But he's fighting a robot, so there's a lot of armor in this one. Kick, spinning attacks. You would break every single bone in your hand if you punch someone in that kind of armor. Like, fighters break their hands all the time punching normal skulls. Imagine punching titanium. So he does a lot of burst attacks. Uppercut, oh, the best punches are when you're both throwing at the same time and then whoever lands first wins. Like you think of like when Conor McGregor knocked out Jose Aldo in just 13 seconds. Jose Aldo was throwing a big wide strike while Conor McGregor was throwing a tight straight strike. The linear strikes, they land faster than the roundabout strikes. So when you're both throwing a punch at the same time, who's ever throwing the straighter punch is gonna land first. So Tekken 8 does a really good job of when fighters are, when, like, when your opponent is still kind of falling, that's when you attack. That's the same as mixed martial arts when you've got them kind of off balance. You're throwing little strikes and they're kind of flustered and their timing's off. That's their version of it. Because obviously you're not going to be knocking opponents 13 feet into the air and kicking them 12 times before they hit the ground. But instead of that, it's when they're discombobulated. So there is like a real fighting element to that. Double punch. The double punch, no power. You can't have any power with the double punch. You gotta be able to rotate when you're throwing a punch. Double punch, it's undefendable, because how do you block two fists, but you're not gonna do a lot of damage when you get there. He is drippy. Look at that. So that's, uh, I believe for Wushu, I believe it's in Wushu. You'll see like Tony Ferguson use those all the time because it's for hand trapping, whereas like the, the branches that are coming out, it's like the limbs of a fighter and you're using it to hand trap and throw like little tight, like kind of slap fights and like elbow attacks like this. You don't see it a lot in MMA, but Tony Ferguson used that a lot because Tony Ferguson's crazy and he trains in the weirdest ways. Big kick to the head, combination to the body and finish with, I think that was a flying knee. Oh, just charge him, run as fast as you can, close the distance, and throw your combination. He's got the sun... Oh, a staff? Okay. If you can sneak that in and the commission doesn't see, doesn't see, go ahead. And then show off your yoga moves and your gaiters. All right, and because it's, uh, it's a video game, there has to be a robot. There needs to be a cyborg. Certain fighters who have so many surgeries and have, like, steel plates in their hand or metal rods in their shins, they're, like, 7% of the way here. Won't be long before a guy is just full adamantium. How do you fight a robot? Like, how do you punch metal? Explains why this guy's not losing. They gotta have some kind of weakness, like that little, like, hose. You can, like, pull it and, like, oil shoots everywhere and they can't function. Yeah, when you're a robot, just go power. You're punching with steel. You can't be defended. Oh, it's gotta hurt so bad. And he has a laser bazooka. Again, probably should have used that right out of the gate. Not wasted time. Love how you attack in tech, and once you got your opponent hurt, that's when you get all your damage done. So whoever lands first, the opponent's kind of discombobulated for a second, then you make your move and get their power bar as low as possible. Same in mixed martial arts. When I have you at a disadvantage, I have your back up against the cage, I have you flustered, I have, I'm on top of you. That's when you get your advantage and that's when you do your damage. All right, thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Experts React for Tekken 8. Again, I'm RJ Clifford. You can follow me on the Twitter machine at RJ Clifford MMA. Same handle on Instagram as well. And of course, make sure you follow Experts React on Facebook and YouTube. Until next time, later.